Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs. Welcome back to the second episode of the 2016 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival here in beautiful New Zealand. But first, here's this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penrite. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. In the Northern Hemisphere of New Zealand, car events don't get much bigger than this. Up to 3,000 vehicles over three big days. This is Sunday, the last day, and there's no signs of this event backing off. On last week's TV episode of Classic Restos, we debuted the 2016 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. First fish off the rank was Eric and his amazing 1968 Barracuda. Then there was Dan the Man with a busted hand and an early rat rod that seemed on the piss. It was that insanely archaic. Kevin and Judy's 1956 Chevy Nomad attracted big looks because of its rarity. And Michael's 1934 Ford V8 Roadster set a benchmark. What a car. Then we ended up with an emotional spin from Alan with his stunning 1969 HT GTS Monaro. It belonged to a mate that had passed, and then Alan restored it. So now, stay in your favourite couch as I bring you more of the 2016 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. When it comes to long and cool, it's pretty hard to go past this. How you doing, Jeff? Yeah, good, thanks, Sledge. That's the way, mate. Had a big night last night, mate, did you? Yeah, a few too many, yeah. as you do when you're here. That's the one, mate. This is what it's all about. What an awesome weekend here, right? You know, it's a good, it's, 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 it's the, the year, it's good. It's real yeah. good. When it comes to long and cool, it's pretty hard to go past this. A four-door 1960 Impala, stainless steel trim galore, and look at that back glass, the way that wraps around. What a cool thing. Yeah, so that's quite a neat and an, an original old car. It's um, it is what it is, and uh, it's lived a life. Um, yeah, I love it. Jeff, it's an unrestored example, like you say. I mean, uh, to come this far from 1960 and and keep this originality is just so awesome. Love the V8 up front, but this has also got a V in the trunk. What a shape! Yeah, no, nah, it's uh, yeah, definitely the. I love them. Pretty, pretty car. You know. How does it ride? Yeah, good, good. It's not a sports car, but yeah, yeah, goes and stops well. That's what they were designed for, weren't they? A to B, straight line, in comfort, and a whole heap of style and class to go with it. Yeah, mate. No, it's good. Now, Jeff, what powers it up front? It's a big block, 348, original tri-power car, three-carb car. Yeah, yeah. Quite, quite a rare old car, but yeah, yeah no, goes good. What type of transmission you got? Uh, power glide, cast iron power glide. So, yeah. There's a lot to be said for those as well. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Um, okay, now uh, when we look at the trim, we look at the interior of the car. I mean, obviously, this hasn't had a hard life. Um, what can you tell us in terms of history? Uh, it was a friend of mine bought it in out of he bought it out of Reno Auction, and it was a deceased estate. Uh, the old fella bought it Reno uh, Reno Chev dealer in 1960, and yeah, he when he died, it went to his grandson. It sat at his grandson's shed for 25 years, and that's when it turned up over here. So yeah, it, it, it's done 98,000 miles, pretty well genuine. So yeah, it's a, just a good, clean old car. Now, Jeff, this particular car here, the wheels, you've gone the big chromies on there, kind of cool, sort of suits the era a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's about, yeah, for me it's about if I bought this car new back in 1960, what wheels would you use on it? And, yeah. and it's, yeah, I'm not a big wheel sort of a guy and the, the wide whites tend to suit it, you know? Yeah, it's highlighted by the white walls. I mean, obviously back in the day, steel wheels would have had a, a full dress rim cover over those steel wheels when it would, was new. Um, but look, I, I like the look. It sits a little lower. It just showcases nicely with the chrome. It's pretty neat. 
Yeah, mate, and there's plenty of chrome in this car. I tell you, when you've got to clean it, mate, there's plenty involved in that. <laughs> Good on you, Jeff. Mate, thank you so much. Oh, look, you know, it's a big call for these guys. First thing Sunday morning, mm. what they put themselves through Saturday <laughs> night. I'm amazed, I'm amazed you're even upright. Yeah, mate. Yeah, no, it's all good. Home to bed, home to bed. <laughs> <laughs> all these blokes are going home for a rest. Good on you, mate. Cheers, Lich. Thank right. you. How could you not love this Chevy Impala? One distinct feature that I adore of the car, four-door and pillarless. No post here to knock your arm on getting in and out. And what about the side profile? A stainless steel rocket with Impala logo in the white jet stream. What style? What class? Car makers, they can't build cars like this anymore. This is a lost era. From one 1960s land yacht to another 1960s car, we've got a Volkswagen and we've got Joel. Hello, Joel, how you doing? It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thanks for bringing this Dak Dak along. Oh, pleasure. Now, listen, mate, you're a young bloke. You're into the Volkswagen. It's a fun fraternity, our Dak Dak people. What do you love about the Volkswagen and what can you tell us about it? Oh, I just always love the shape and just what you can do with it, especially when it's lowered, you know, a completely different car. Just the shape and everything. And John, you've put a lot of effort into the paintwork, haven't you? I mean, uh, do you think the brown rust will buff out? What are you going to do there? Well, that's definitely not coming out. I've always loved the patina look, so that's what I was after. So Nice and original from 1960. Now, it is a low car, uh, depicted by the lettering across the bottom of the back screen there in German. Uh, I thought that was quite appropriate and creative. <laughs> yeah, my brother came up that, so I thought I'd better rock it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much lower than that, does it? No, not really, no. Now, Joel, typical Volkswagen, bit of neg camber there in the rear going on. Now, what do you do? Do you what do you do? You you back into corners, do you? <laughs> no, it's just natural camber. So when you lower the car that low, it just goes right up in it. Natural. Yeah, natural. Natural. So it sounds like a, a body lotion or something. Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Um, look, the car in itself. I mean, uh, from 1960. What I love about these things is they've gone for so long, and uh, it's still with us today, running around. Now, how far? back do Volkswagens go with you? Were they in your family or? Um, not really, like we've always had them but I'm probably the only one to have a car, a V-dub this old so yeah, yeah so it's good. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take you to get here? Um, about, about a month to get it to that stage so. Yeah but to come to Kiumu how long oh. did it take you? Oh two hours from Hamilton. So two hours? Yeah, yeah it was a good drive, no scraping though yeah. so it was alright. And, and you only live, uh, Joel only lives three streets from here? <laughs> yeah that's the one. <laughs> That's the go. Mate, it's a cool car. I like it. And I think it's really good too because it's uh, young guys coming up through our classic car fraternity and that's what it's all about. Keeping uh, the dream alive and the traditions alive. Great car. Keep up the good work, cool. mate. Thanks heaps, Fletch. No worries. Thanks, Joel. You are watching the incredible 2016 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival and you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. Stay right where you are. I'll be back with more classics right after this. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hare and Forbes Machinery House. Hare and Forbes Machinery House have showrooms around Australia and New Zealand that will have you browsing for hours. See the largest range of industrial and workshop DIY tools. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machineryhouse.com.au. Hare and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machineryhouse.com.au. In 1926, Australia's Penrhyn Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrhyn Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrides. Here at the 2016 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival, they even have a used car section where you can browse to your heart's content. You never know, you may just find the classic vehicle you've always been looking for.
It's time for Neil now on today's show. How are you doing, Neil? Yeah, not too bad, Fletch. That's the way, mate. An incredible thunderbird. You know, cars come along sometimes, and yes, Fletch, you get stuck for words. There's only so many words you can come up with to describe such a car. One of the most incredible cars, I guess, 1960 Thunderbird. The condition of this is amazing. Now, Neil, you're a young guy. Having this type of car, it's not every day of the week that you, you see that. You must have a, an admiration for this style of vehicle. Where does the Thunderbird go back with you? Um, oh, I've always been into them. My, my grandfather used to collect old Fords and my, my dad was into them and uh, got me into them. It's just been part of the family. What did you learn to drive on? I uh, learned to drive in a 63 Fairland Coupe. Yeah, see, there you go. See, there it is. That, that, that's what I was looking for. This is where it's always interesting to find out where it goes back, where we get our interest from to inspire us to end up with the cars that we have. That is just amazing. Now, tell us what you've done to the car since you've had it, Neil. Um, well, I've pretty much fully rebuilt everything except for the body. I've, I've left the paint original and the, well, the interior. The seats are all original still. Um, but I've rebuilt the motor, so it's 390, but it's got alloy heads and forged pistons, forged rods, all, all, all the gear in it. It's just, it's just stunning. I mean, it's stunning all day long. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a bad example. It's pretty hard to find one that good. Now, when we look at this interior, now to me, uh, an elderly couple that you bought it from? Yeah, well, it was just the, the original owners that we bought it from in uh, Oakland, California. Yeah. And they were, they were in their 70s and yeah. they just didn't use the car anymore, so they were just lucky they kept it in a nice dark, dry garage and... Were they emotional to see it go? Um, I wasn't actually there. I bought it sight unseen, so they were over in the States and I was over here in New Zealand. No, in, no indication on the telephone or any communication that they were reluctant? Well, that, I was actually dealing with a, a woman who was a real estate agent. She was, she was actually selling it on behalf of the people that, that owned it. So, oh, Poor old people. They might not even know it. It's even left their garage. I sent him some photos. I sent the old guy some photos since yeah. since I've done it all up, and yeah, he was pretty happy to see it all, all done. Neil, it's an absolute credit to you. It really is. Uh, I mean, to think too. I mean, when we look at this interior, I mean, it's done nothing. It really has done nothing. I mean, it hasn't had a hard life. Uh, it's been in a garage all its life and hasn't been outside. You can just tell. I just can't believe when you look at little things how brand new they look. Yeah, it's all it's all original. The the, the only thing I've replaced in there is the rubber floor mats. Otherwise, it's completely original. Nothing, nothing's been touched. It's just all, all as it was. Now, Neil, up front the big 390, the FE block. What have you done there? Uh, it's been fully rebuilt from top to bottom. The only original thing left on it is the block. Uh, it's got alloy heads on it and stainless roller rockers, forged rods, forged pistons. Uh, you, you name it, it's got it pretty much. And uh, what did you do camshaft wise? Uh, it's got a cryo, cryo cam in it, which was all matched, matched to suit what we were wanting to do with it. Did you go a roller cam? Uh, no, it's a flat tappet, hydraulic flat tappet, yep. but it was just something mild because it's a street car and we do a lot of miles in it. So. That's good, and uh, keeping it a little bit period correct as well. Yeah. Uh, carbies? Uh, it's just got a Holly 670 Street Avenger yeah. carb on it, yep. The attention to detail around your engine bay is uh, just as uh, unsurpassed as what you've done on the interior of the car as well, might I say. Yeah, well, the interior is all completely original, but yeah, the, the engine bay, we've, we've repainted everything and detailed it. Like zinc plated all the bolts and done done everything, so it looks just like brand new. Automatic transmission. What's going on there? Uh, it's still got the original cruisematic in it for now, but we're we're right on the limit of what the uh, the power that that can handle. So we're going to be changing to a C6 soon, <laughs> at, uh, so that I can enjoy it a bit more. <laughs> yeah, this guy's on a mission. And uh, last but not least, rear end. What are you doing with the uh, rear ratio there in the back? Uh, it's still got the factory nine inch in it, but it's been all fully rebuilt and it's just a three to one ratio. Yeah. What do you do for work now? Uh, I run Phoenix Audio in New Zealand, so we build retro sound systems for, for classic cars. So we take the old original radios and, and we rebuild them with modern technology inside them. Yeah. They give them really, really good performance and they keep them looking original. Good on you, Neil. I don't usually do this, but I tell you what, we're going to give you a plug. What's your website? Uh, it's www.phoenixaudionz.com. There you go. If you want something done that's precise, I mean, look at his car. He does an awesome sound system, and I don't mind helping someone when I can, mate. Good on you, Neil. Awesome. Thank, thanks very much, Rich. Right. And thanks for being on today's show. Oh, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. for having me. You're yeah. welcome. You know, this really is an immaculate car, and there's no doubt that Neil has done a lot of work, but I really think that he needs to have this looked at. Now, on last week's show, I promised you that I'd take you inside of the sheds here on the grounds at QMU. So... Let's go inside and see what awaits us.
like stuff like this, then you will love a Fletch tour. Have a look at this. There is nothing quite like a Fletch tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. On a Fletch tour, you don't have to worry about a thing. I can't believe how good it's been. Experience Route 66. We're definitely coming back to do Route 66. Or choose the Detroit tour, attending the Woodward Dream Cruise. On a Fletch tour, every day just gets better and better. You've got to do something in your life, you've got to do a Fletch tour. There are five Fletch Tours. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. Penrod, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penrideoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hair and Forbes Machinery House. From a garage jack through to a lathe, Hair and Forbes has the range. And Hair and Forbes Machinery House are Australian owned, established since 1930. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machineryhouse.com.au. Hair and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machineryhouse.com.au. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid-up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Good are these sheds here at Cumia for the 2016 Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. It's time now for Malcolm with a stunning 1936 Packard. How are you, Malcolm? I'm well, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good. Uh, I hope you didn't mind me picking on you. Not at all, not at all. Uh, you bring a car like this along to an event like this, you're going to get picked on for television. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I guess so, but uh, we use the car a lot and we quite often are out on the street and, and, and it attracts a lot of attention. What a stunning machine. And you know what I've noticed in the front? You have got some little stone chips there. You do drive this car. Absolutely. We drive this car right down to the bottom of South Island. Uh, we use it all the time. During the summer, every weekend, we're out in the car. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? I mean, I think a lot of these types of cars tend to park up a lot and not be used, so you're using it to its full advantage. It must be uh, an incredible thing to drive. It's a great car to drive. Um, it's a very, very comfortable car to drive. It's got independent front suspension. It's got very good steering. Um, so it drives somewhat like a modern car, yeah. um, but it's still got that lovely uniqueness of a, of a sort of classic car. Malcolm, I still can't stop thinking about what this must have been like back in 1936. I mean, the type of person here in New Zealand, just after the Depression, to be able to have afforded a vehicle like this must have been an exception to the rule. Well, yes. I mean, Packards was right up there with Cadillac as the top of the tree. And so it would be, you know, New Zealand coming out of the Depression, probably the likes of doctors, lawyers, those sort of people would, yeah. be, would be Packard owners. Now, Malcolm, I notice it's a right-hand drive car too. Absolutely. This is actually a factory right-hand drive car. 
and it was first registered in May 1936 here in New Zealand and it's never been unregistered. So this car has been on the road for its whole life. So assembled here in New Zealand? No, no, it was assembled in, um, well we're not sure of the USA or in Canada, right. but assembled as a right hand drive car in 1936. Well there you go, right hand drive factory. That, that's great, that really is. Uh, also too, on a Fletch tour, uh, we take you to, well, past the Packard plant in Detroit. Now, Malcolm, you've got the Packard Proving Grounds t-shirt on as well. That's another interesting place to go to when you visit Detroit as well. There's a, a little bit of the testing ground or the proving grounds there left, probably about an 80 metre section of concrete. You've been there, right? I've been there, absolutely. So the really all that's left, apart from the uh, the oval, which as you say, there's only about 100 metres of that left, there's the engineering sheds and, and things like that and the original lodge. Yep. Uh, we were there just August of last year and it was just fantastic to actually be there on the site where they used to test these cars. This one may even have been around that test track. So many mighty manufacturers went under uh, due to adverse situations and conditions. Uh, the story of Preston Tucker uh, and I think also too that the uh, Packard is definitely one of those cars that's a very sad story because they were such a fantastic made car, they were a well built car and when you stop and think about it for all rhyme or reason uh, there was nothing to suggest why the Packard should not have continued. Well. It Excuse me, um, Packard actually merged with Studebaker in about 1954-55 and uh, I think they just made a really big mistake because uh, unfortunately uh, the company that they owned Packard and Studebaker then tended to asset strip it. So basically all the assets from Packard got used and uh, it was really sad that uh, within another two or three years Packard was no, name was no longer. I think one good thing uh, in respect of that, at least they've got the symbol that they have today because they're not made anymore. And I mean, this is just a moving time capsule, it really is. Um, what's the weight of the car, Malcolm? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think it's about a tonne and a half. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically, these were like, they were like, car, they were like cars on truck chassis, weren't they? Well, they were very strongly built, but also they were built uh, very refined engineering so that they were good and easy to drive. My wife drives this car with no difficulty, steering and gearbox, no problems at all. Um, so it's a big car, but it drives easily. Isn't it nice to have the spare wheel on the fender, on that sweeping fender, just ahead of the running board? I, I just think that in itself is just class all day long. Yeah, I think the twin side mounts just really, as you say, just give the car that little bit of extra class and the, the chrome wire wheels just really set the car off so nice. What powers it up front, Malcolm? It's a straight eight. Uh, this was called the Model 120 and it stood for the 120 inch wheelbase and 120 brake horsepower. When you're talking about, I mean, trucks had 100 horsepower once upon a time, and that was big. I mean, when you started talking about 100 horsepower in a car, that was massive, and to be 120 horsepower, um, lower gear ratios as well, and back with the diff. Uh, first gear, it's the old story, you know, up any mountain, they'd pull anything. Absolutely. Well, this car goes up the uh, Taupo to Napier uh, hills in top gear, no problems at all. We've actually fitted um, a separate overdrive to it, so all the drivetrain is original, but it's got an overdrive, which means that we can cruise at 100k and we're only doing about 2,000 RPM rather than close to the 3,000, which is not good for side valve engines. Like a, a gear vendors unit? It's very similar. It is a Laycock, actually a Laycock unit, and Geared Vendors uh, bought Laycock. So it's the same type of thing, yeah. absolutely. Malcolm, thank you once again for sharing the car with us. Once again, it could turn into the Malcolm half hour. It's the sort of car that you could just keep on talking about. And every time you move your head and you find a different angle, there's something else to look at. The way that the headlights are mounted, the little side lights on top of the fenders, the hood ornament, stunning stuff all day long. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Fletch. Really appreciate it. Well, three huge days have just finally come to an end. What a sensational event, the 2016 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. Keep an eye out online for dates in 2017, and no matter where you're travelling from, it'll be well worth the trip. In the meantime, no matter where you're watching from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, signing off from QMU here in New Zealand, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au.
Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs.